Although Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created the husband and the wife to always be there for each other and to help each other grow, to support one another, to rely on one another, and to value each other as gifts given to each other by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there comes times when the loved ones can't always be there for each other. Circumstances change in life, either because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who changed it, or because of other reasons that are natural in life. The love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala therefore comes before anyone and anything else. And we have to be careful not to invest our love completely and wholeheartedly into one person or one thing, because when that goes away, we often don't know where to go after that. And some people even resort to a terrible end and mental illnesses. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save us from that. Hajar alayhi salam and her relationship with Ibrahim alayhi salam gives us a little glimpse into some solution to keep our well-being continued and to help us understand that we always have Allah no matter what. Allah orders Ibrahim alayhi salam to take his wife Hajar and his only newborn son who was still an infant, a suckling baby, not more than about two or three months old, into a barren land uninhabited by anybody and no water, no vegetation in the middle of nowhere, which is now called Mecca. Imagine, ordered by Allah, without explanation, and the husband tells his wife, we are going somewhere without knowing where to go. And she doesn't know that he's going to leave them there without any prior warning, with her only newborn son in the middle of nowhere and return. Ibrahim alayhi salam truly relied on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But now we are going to be introduced to the power and strength of a role model woman. When he arrived there, there were only mountains, desert, vultures and scorpions and snakes. As they lay to rest, they only had a few bits of dates and water. Suddenly Ibrahim alayhi salam stood up without a single word, turned his back and started walking alone back to Jerusalem. Usually he would inform his wife and communicate with her. Hajar alayhi salam was not used to that. This was extremely odd. So she got up and frantically ran towards her husband Ibrahim, trying to tap him from the back, but he wouldn't turn around. Asking him, إِلَى مَنْ تَتْرُكَنَا إِلَى مَنْ تَتْرُكَنَا who are you leaving us to? Who are you leaving us to? Ibrahim السلام, would not reply. He just kept walking with his head down. Perhaps if Ibrahim السلام, looked up, his compassion and mercy would kick in. And then his weakness of emotions and love would prevent him from carrying out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's order. But we see Hajar السلام, insisting on finding out the answer, which is totally understandable. But after only a few moments, Hajar السلام, took a step back and when she noticed that her husband, who she knows is a messenger and prophet of Allah, would not reply, she asked him an ultimate question. Allah, amaraka bihada. Is it Allah who commanded you to do this? And without looking at her, he just nodded his head and said, Ajal, yes. So she took a step back again, relaxed and was at full peace and tranquility and said the following words, إذن إذن لا If this is what Allah has commanded, then surely He will not leave us abandoned. Allahu Akbar. Such reliance and trust. She forgot about her husband. She no longer needs her husband's support for without Allah, her husband can do nothing. Without Allah, no one can do anything. But the fact that she had Allah on her side you can keep her in the most terrifying places, but she knows he's there and she'll be safe. She went back to her son. You can imagine her like a single woman, a single mother who has been abandoned. Although Ibrahim السلام, did not abandon her willfully. As the food ran out, she got a little bit scared and nervous. It's quite natural. So she started to walk between two hills, as you know. These two hills that existed at that time are now named Safa and Marwa. 
As she walked between these two hills climbing on each one, she would look far and wide to see if she can see anybody coming forward to get some help. She needed food, water. She had no more milk left in her body to feed her son. Her son is crying and wailing. There's no food, there's no water. And the vultures were circulating above them. She kept going back and forth. And there was a little section. If you don't mind, I would like to focus on this small, seemingly insignificant section, which has an amazing moral to it. There was a little section between the two hills that was like a ditch. As soon as Hajra would reach that ditch, she would have to go down that ditch until she could no longer see her own baby crying. A motherly instinct is that she cannot keep her eye away from her child, so she would run or jog through that ditch every time she got there. She went back and forth seven times until she reached Marwa, and then she heard a noise at her baby where he was. She said to herself, Ma, Ma, in their language, meaning, silence, silence, listen. She came back and there she found water gushing out of the ground beneath the feet of Ismail alayhi salam while he's laughing and giggling. Jibreel alayhi salam, the angel had come down with the order of Allah and he stamped his foot into the ground and Zamzam water came out. Where did Zamzam come from? The name? Well, Hajar alayhi salam, she thought this is too much water. So she started to gather the dust and the sand and the soil and trying to make it smaller and saying Zummi Zummi, which means shrink, shrink. So the name came Zamzam. Brothers and sisters, Hajar alayhi salam waited and there came a tribe called Banu Jurhum, who was an Arab tribe who had received a drought in their own land and there was no more reason to live there. They were looking for a new home. And when they saw the vultures circulating above them, they thought there was a tribe there or a city. When they arrived, they made a deal with Hajar to use the water and she charged them rent to use the water. So not only was she reliant on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but she was also wise and smart in the way she used her mind. There was some business skills in her and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed it. My brothers and sisters, did you know that because of this great role model Hajar alayhi salam, today and for over 4,000 years, especially in the last 1,400 years since Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa came out, men and women from all around the world, every single day and night without fail, walk between these two hills, Safa and Marwa. Check this out. Remember when we said that there was a ditch she jogged through? Today there's no ditch, it's just tiles. But men have to jog through it. Do you see how even the walk, even the style and the manner that Hajar salam did, we all do it as a commemoration of that time. And to remember the true meaning of trust and loyalty and reliance upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from a woman. How many women, my dear brothers and sisters? One woman. Billions of people go from Safa and Marwa, emulating this one woman whom Allah honored till the end of time. Brothers and sisters, women, daughters and mothers are important in our religion and we must give them respect and value as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed us through our great mother Hajar alayhi salam. May Allah bless our mothers, our sisters, our daughters, our wives, our aunts, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill their hearts and minds with wisdom, iman, and make them among the strong and patient. May Allah reward you all. <laughs>